<laughs> and welcome to Shred Cells episode 63. I'm your host, Alex Schmitz, and with me here today with that horrible opening is Kenneth McNulty. I missed. <laughs> Clara Heimberger. Hey, I've got chicken nuggets. <laughs> Aaron Ford. Hello. And Dakota Williams. Howdy. <laughs> All right, yes, this Kenny, is a... you <laughs> inconceivable dolt. Hey, that ties into Ruby because the horns of battle ring through the entire series, and that was the air horn of battle. No, it didn't. It was like the last... Four episodes. Yeah, but that's still the series. <laughs> okay. The last four episodes. <laughs> yeah, Kenny said he had an opening related to Ruby to surprise us with. The and horns of battle. That's what he had for us. <laughs> We're supposed to be five of them, but I missed. All right. Yeah, so, um, you know, Dakota, you've been in a podcast this year, but this is only your second one, right? Yeah, yeah. Second one. And Aaron, you were on one of the core ones I think we did last year, but it's been a while. Yep, this is also my second one. I've just been here for a lot longer, which that's is true. I guess sadder on my mind. <laughs> I've been in a I lot know. of podcasts. You have. Also, if you hear some uh, food munchies, that would be Claire with her McDonald's. Ang, 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 ang. Yeah. Wait, how do that. you say not what I'm munching eating food like. in Japanese? Tabimono, tabimasu. There we go. Japanese fact of the week. Onegashimasu. Or I can say, um... <laughs> Sounds beautiful, Aaron. Um, <laughs> I say it because it bothers her. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> what is it? It's bangohan. Bangohan is dinner. Uh, bangohan, o tabimasu. Gotcha. Tabite imas. I'm currently eating in dinner. In French is anana. 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 All right. Oh, that's pineapple. So for those of you who have, have been, uh, haven't been listened to us before, we're actually a part of TechEd, just part of ABW Productions, a media production organization here at Ohio University. We're here at TechEd, so all sorts of cool things, video games, movies, music, anime, all sorts of cool stuff. We're here today to talk about uh, Ruby Volume 2, a... Uh, independent animation project from Rooster Teeth that's been coming out this year. We did a podcast on Ruby Volume 1 uh, last year, actually. And um, we're going to talk about a bit of news and then dive into our thoughts on Ruby Volume 1 before we dive into our discussion on Volume 2. So, as far as for news, um, there, was a, there was actually something kind of cool. There's a Kickstarter that I saw that recently came out for something called Cannon Busters, which is like by like a dude who's... Um, He's like a producer on the show Black Dynamite, which is like an American oh. show on uh, Adult Swim, <laughs> working with like a guy, like some guys from like uh, from Japan, like somebody who worked on Space Dandy. Oh, I got and, him hearing. Space Dandy. Yeah, Space it's basically co- collaborating, Dandy like make this space. short to hopefully make like a TV show. It looks kind of like '90s fantasy esque. So pretty cool. Incredible is what you're telling me. Basically, pretty Good. incredible. Also, Attack on Titan and Marvel are getting this Lee, really Lee. are getting a crossover, oh. which is really weird if you ask me, but. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. I, there's actually a picture. It shows all of like, the uh, Titans running through New York and Spider Man swinging in front of them. He's <laughs> built in three yeah, no, this, is some, gear. this is something that's happening in like two weeks. Yeah, no, it's. <laughs> no, I found out about it today. Yeah. So, yeah, that's apparently a thing. Uh, <laughs> okay. This Thor. isn't really news, but something relevant to Claire and I. Uh, tomorrow, the Naruto manga is going to end. <laughs> and we're, it's going to be sad. After how many years? Like 14. Oh, yeah. It's not as long as I One Piece. No, no it's seven? not. <laughs> One Piece will I was in seventh grade when I picked end. up Naruto. Nope. That's like, because- holy crap. No, I remember just the tuning exam arc. I remember taping it on VHSs because <laughs> I loved it. Like, there was like a um, like a summary episode from like the beginning of the tuning exams to like the end of when they got out of the Forest of Death. And I've watched that so many times it's stupid. Like how many times? Um... Enough that I've got most of it memorized because I like they dubbed over some scenes to make it seem like they're recapping it. And yeah, it was kind of weird, but at the same time, I really liked it, and it made me realize like how much the animation budget was just nope during those arcs because it's <laughs> horrendous. Of course, it is. I watched oh, it like twice. twice. See, One Piece is never going to end because Ichiro Oda is actually known as Mr. Bones in Japan. <laughs> oh, he's and getting his wild. Ride it will never end. No, it will end, but it's going to take Ten like at least years. a decade. That's my. Theory. Have I ever told you my my? I know this is a little bit off topic, but have I ever told you my uh, ending for One Piece? I have not. It breaks heard Mark this. every time I tell it to him. <laughs> is it that One Piece is the friendship in their hearts? The last, the last shot of the episode will be Luffy standing on a pile of corpses that was once his crew, and he will be looking down on them, and he will shed a single tear as he falls over and begins to die, realizing that the only treasure that was ever real was the adventure. <laughs> that or Oda's going to come Series out and break the fourth wall and they're going to fight Oda. Mark has a heart attack and dies. <laughs> yeah. What I think is, I, I honestly don't think that's going to happen, but I could see the One Piece being something extremely mundane and I it's could Oda. see and I could see Luffy dying at the end of the <laughs> series. Well, I mean, they already, a, a, they already made a point that every time he does gear second, he shortens his life. Oh, yeah. So, I don't think they'd and actually a whole be like, he in, shortens his life. There's a whole thing in Thriller Bark that apparently took down his lifespan by like 10 years. Oh, you Luffy. probably haven't gotten to yet. No, we saw it. Oh, you did? We became the super mega prayer thing. Well, n- not that. More like when he got like poisoned. 
Oh, so that's thriller. Oh no, I'm sorry, I messed that up. It's not thriller bark. It's Alex impel down. Lied to us. Never mind. Yep. You yeah, lied to me. you have that to look forward to. Dewey. Anyways, uh, so tied into that, there's uh, the last Naruto the movie is coming out December 6th in Japan. Really hope it gets an American release because Claire and I will go and see it for I'll sure. I'll cry tears of joy because my shipper heart sails to is going to be shipped with Naruto, and Man, it's going to be. I didn't realize you were really that into Naruto. No, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I the three and a half hour car ride. That was an adventure. I put it down for a little bit during the uh, filler arcs in Shippuden because I was like, this is stupid. And then my brother and I picked up the manga at the library, and we watched or read all that. And then I found it online. I was like, I can continue this until it's over. I think the beauty you and my of friend Jeff did the exact same thing then. So like, yeah, I'm completely yeah, caught up. Oh, and yeah. uh, I've been shipping Naruhina from episode one, and I can rub it in all of my friends. She wasn't faces. even in episode one. She was close enough. <laughs> so you know what, Alex? Um, my <laughs> shipper heart cannot be. I have some character Sakura's creepy thing. Eck. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who. Naruto Sakura? Oh, Naruto Sakura. <laughs> what did he think? Hold I, out your, hold, hold I out heard your something hand. else. I'm sorry. Hold out your hand. Other, closer to wolf. me. Hold out your hand, Kenny. Just let me <laughs> slap your hand. <laughs> Claire failed at slapping his hand. And last thing, um, apparently there's a manga called Blood Blockade Battlefront that is uh, written by the writer of uh, Trigun, which is a great manga. Oh, good. That's being adapted by Studio Bones into something next year, like an anime. Is that Otis thing? No, that's Studio not Otis Bones? thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bones is the studio that made like Fomal right. Alchemist and oh, stuff FML. like that. And Soul Wait, Eater. A. FML. It's FMA and then FMAB if you're talking about Brotherhood. So yeah, that's the news for that. We'll skip animation we've watched since last time and just drive right into our talk on I watch Ruby. Uh, summary I on watch Ruby and Cora. our thoughts on uh, Ruby Volume 1 You know that came out last year. Uh, my general consensus from it from the last year's podcast that we did was that we I enjoyed it. Uh, it definitely had a lot of uh, animation. You know, some of the animation wasn't that great. You know, some of the writing was a little rough. You know, some of the voice acting was a little rough. So you had to go into it with the knowledge that it is like an independent animation sort of thing. So it's not super polished. But it was very enjoyable. You know, the fight scenes were amazing. I came to like the characters a lot, especially John. So overall, I enjoyed Ruby Volume One a lot. Dakota, what were your thoughts? I've always loved Rooster Teeth. Like, even back when they did Red vs. Blue. Yeah, I love RBB, too. I mean, they're just amazing. And, yeah, like you were saying about the animation, it's still a bit sketchy, but it's just the story and everything, just overall, I love it. Even even the character designs that they did for the characters are good for what they are. Mm-hmm. I really like them. Yeah, I like the character designs. Kenny, what would you say? <clears throat> um, I would say I, for, I'm trying to piece together what happened because I saw it a year ago, and I do remember... <laughs> That um the epic fight they had against that giant bird and it took the entirety oh, of their team to take down one of those bird things. Yeah, which no. was awesome. That scene was great, especially with um the girl with the hammer. Nora. Nora, because she's awesome. But yeah, I was gonna say I liked it because it was over the top and actiony. And I mean, I'm used to watching like either stuff in horrible quality or things that aren't done like actually like you know HD quality or things that may not be like you know really really well polished all the way to the, like the extreme of like psychopaths. So I mean, I could overlook like the animation. Like sometimes there were errors or things, but I mean they did it themselves and they did a really good job. And I could easy overlook that obviously like you said sometimes the writing can lack but i mean i i liked it a lot all right claire well first of all does anyone want my last four chicken four four chicken nuggets. if i hadn't what? just eaten like a full cooking tray of chicken nuggets no i had an entire pizza. i'll have one here free game oh boy thank you so i can't eat anymore because i had so many chips um <laughs> i'm proud of you i am so unhealthy you should just buy those at kroger Eek. it's like in bulk cheaper Eek. that's a yes so anyways ruby um <laughs> ruby uh <laughs> Uh, stop tickling me. Um, <laughs> Kenny. It wasn't me. <laughs> Ru- I really liked Ruby. Like, I remember oh. seeing all of the uh, trailers in the summertime for all the girls, and I watched whatever was there, and uh, stop what? going to hit you. <laughs> we have to put you in and the timeout I, corner, Kenny. I've <laughs> loved Yang forever. Yang is my queen, and I love her. Oh, yeah. Who? Yang. Who? Yeah, oh, gotcha. She's yeah. my favorite. I love her. Yeah, well, it's nice because she got a lot more development this season than she did in but last. She's not John. She's not I John. did like John though. Like I liked. You mean you love John? I, no, I love John. I Thank love you. Pierre. I just love Team Juniper great. in general. Like, oof, I'm really glad that they got some time to do their things. Yeah, I think Juniper is just in general a little bit more interesting. I like him a lot. I there's, think there's more of there's more like interesting dynamics. They're than all on very Team very Ruby. different people. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I feel like with Team Ruby, since they're more the main characters, they've dived more into like these more serious issues with like their backstories and stuff. Whereas Team Juniper, since they're not the main characters, are allowed to be more lighthearted and fun. 
I hope that doesn't stay the case for the rest of however long this oh, goes. Oh, it's going to get sad. Don't worry. I'm no, sure I'm, John I'm looking forward to when it does. Um, Aaron, what were your thoughts on season one? Uh, no. Rooster teeth. It's been a while since I've watched it, but uh, I remember... <laughs> Didn't think too much of the animation, but that was mostly because, like you said, it wasn't very polished. Um, some of the writing was a little corny. Some of the voice acting was lacked here and there. Um, fight scenes were good. Characters, for the most part, were good. There were a couple I had some issues with. Um, I didn't like Osbin. I still really don't care for Osbin that mm-hmm. much. We'll talk about that. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Pretty Freaking much it. Professor Ublek was still one of my favorite characters this <laughs> season, <laughs> as he was last season. He's I've fantastic. always fantastic. That's my favorite kind of history teacher. I have a history teacher this semester who talks that fast, and I love it because it's it, she's not, like, pandering to me. Like, she's <laughs> saying, hey, you're an intelligent individual who can keep up with what I'm saying. I'm going to speak for the entire lecture, as opposed to those professors who just stare at you and go, sentence, dot, what? dot, dot, <laughs> sentence, <laughs> dot. Dot, yeah, dot. I, do I hate that. it. I would sit in a class with <laughs> Professor Ublick and go, yes, I like this class. I'll answer your questions. You should tell her that next time. Oh, can I mention how much I absolutely love the soundtrack, and I've listened to it an obscene amount of times, it's true. especially I Burn? Uh, that's I, the one from Yang's trailer. Oh, yes. If I ever get money again, I might buy it. Mark yeah. has it, I think. Yeah, it's only Does like it? 10 bucks, I think, on uh, iTunes. Ask him to Oof. listen to it. iTunes. <laughs> Oof, no. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Well, I'm sure it's on other mp3 sites as well yeah, yeah. but diving into volume two of the show then because uh, i think technically this is like ruby vol- season one volume two based on how they like structure these things it's a little strange but um let's i divided the show kind of into four arcs you know the first four episodes dealing with the white fang the stuff with the dance in the middle of the show and then the stuff where they went outside the city for the last few episodes they went outside the city that's only three they did outside. well i said three arcs right you said four. four arcs. Well, I meant three arcs. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're misleading us. Alex. Well, uh, there's a fourth arc in that they had those weird inter episodes. Well, this is in, like, folks. Alex Schmitz is a liar. Oh, don't. Oh. He totally admits it. Are By you the, <laughs> the Nazi from Korra? Yes. <laughs> By the way, just as an uh, just as an ahead, you can talk about it all you want. I don't really care, but I forgot to watch the credits, the after credits thing, <gasps> which I heard existed. <gasps> That's actually good. really good. It is good. It's kind of really it was, important. It was, it was after the, the well, I mean, just the one five minutes. One dude, right? One yeah. thing is revealed. But that we're going to spoil yeah. for it's you, but important. whatever. It's pretty important. Okay. Yeah. So talking about the first arc of the show, um, I think the show came, you know, because I was looking forward to it coming back, you know, uh, when it came back a few months ago and you know, started up again. Like, yeah, Ruby Volume 2. And uh, it started... <laughs> Way to fail, J- <laughs> Kenny. Dude, I've thrown a point blank rage and miss. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> Apparently, uh, I think the first episode Absolutely. actually made a pretty good decision by starting out with like an epic action scene with the best food fight of all time. Oh, oh I forgot God. Over the top that was like Queen who was it? Yeah, Yang gets launched into orbit literally <laughs> and like yeah. goes down. Yeah, no, I I, I read I, I read something online that was it was just in a comment thread and somebody actually did the math to see how high Yang was launched and it was into the upper thermosphere. <laughs> Based so on very, how long very, it took very her to fall. Well, she was in space, more yes, or less. And she got space. Then the person emphasized that Nora did that with a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is how much upper arm strength Nora has. That's the closest yeah, like, to getting, like, you know, vacuumed on a uh, planet. Although it There's does bring up an interesting point about how strong the characters actually are without their weapons. Yeah. Which came up this Except season. Except Ruby. It did. <laughs> it did. Ruby can't do right. anything. Yeah, I'm curious to I see if that's agree. a trend with all of the characters We're or with just Ruby, because you haven't seen any of the other ones. Well, obviously, Yang is going to be awesome because her weapons is her fists, pretty much. And True. The more she gets hurt, the more powerful she is. <laughs> 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 Sorry. So this is why we don't eat food before the podcast. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> you ate a supreme pizza. Don't lie to him. Most Thanks, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no. The more powerful she is, the more she gets hit. And I like that because she's the one character you see get flopped. Like nobody else gets hit really on screen but her. Well, the, the others get it. hit. Like True, twice. Anytime she's about to get hit, it cuts. At the like, same I time, I don't see her really get hit. At the same time, how much of her fists is being augmented by those little like shotgun gauntlets or whatever? They're pretty awesome. They yeah, are pretty they awesome. are. But you don't like. As of now, you don't know what percentage is Yang, what percentage is like the weapon. Well, it's all because of that. once. Like, everybody uses weapons to augment their strength to show. Well, yeah, I know, but that's my point. She what happens glows. if they get di- disconnected from those? Well, Ruby did yeah. that. I mean, we saw that. That's, that's my point. <laughs> Yang didn't have her gauntlets in the food fight. It's true. She had chickens. N- well, none of them true. did, okay. and they were still doing good, you know? Yeah, good true, but they all, they all had substitutes. I, that's true. Um, I saw this thing, like, people were like, wow, Yang's so OP. She gets so much stronger, and I'm like, yes, but you have to remember that she still has all that damage. Until she it fights. It doesn't disappear. Until she fights 
like cotton candy girl or whatever. Yeah, well, that's, you want to know? I have a theory about that though. You yeah. want to know what her actual name is? Yeah, I don't know. A cotton or candy cotton girl, candy. <laughs> Neapolitan. What? Neapolitan. Neo. But they call her Neo, so that that makes Neopolitan. it a little better. <laughs> no, like no, I'm about gonna go that. with cotton candy girl. <laughs> yeah. About okay. that though, like the activate. reason Yang couldn't find her is because one, she deflects everything she can see, and two, Yang wasn't getting hit, so she wasn't getting like stronger. Sh- hurt, she, so she, she didn't get. Nothing major though. It was all just little like pushes poke, and poke, shoves poke. and pokes and nothing poke, to do real damage, significant damage. damage. I don't know, but little, but she did get like knocked on, out unconscious, right, you know, at the end of the fight. That's different than being like beaten to the point where you have to like unleash I your burn. stored Most, energy. Oh, that entire sequence. I know you had this all structured out. The like, chainsaw. It's fine. We can arcs. we can talk. <laughs> but my favorite, most underrated character the of the chainsaw. entire season, the guy with the chainsaw. Give me oh more God. of my chainsaw. What did he warrior. say again when he came out? Like he said something Unless really awesome. Now I get to kill a schnee. That was it. That and then was it. Just oh. like, well, oh. fun fact: you actually saw him earlier in the season because in episode four. Um, Blake and son, son went to that rally for the White Fang, and he was there, like, talking before Torchwick came up to talk, oh, and he, he had, like, this Russian accent thing. He was, like, Torchwick's MC. Yeah. Basically. He's, like, a White Fang higher up, obviously. Um, or a White Fang but, MC. Uh, I was re-watching the show with Tristan the other day, and he actually pointed out something that I totally missed my first time through. You don't see him get beaten. Like, he beats Weiss, yep. and then, like, all, when it cuts back to the train, the, all the girls walk up on top of the train, and you don't know what happened to him. Mm-hmm. So presumably they came out. and beat him up. Yep. I just I, I just want him to get, like, I don't know, I just want, like, Torchwick or Cinder or somebody to come along with a little needle and just inject that guy, and he goes Hulk mode with that chainsaw <laughs> and destroys everything. Well, or he injects himself. Is Whatever. Is for? I hope he gets two chainsaws. Yeah, because, no. yeah. you know, there's the joke that everything in the show is a gun, but for him it's just like, no, this chainsaw is just a chainsaw. <laughs> no, but this chainsaw terrifying. can just level buildings, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. it's scarier that way. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're also introduced in the early part of the show to two new characters, Mercury and Emerald, kind of our two new villain yeah. characters. Sir and Kicklip, yes. No, Sir and, and Neptune. Yeah. Don't forget Neptune. And Neptune. Okay, Neptune's Neptune? number one, but he's such a villain, Neptune? it's stupid. No, Neptune, he's not. He has the same name that they all, like Mercury. Like, all those names. He has Neptune. That's a planet. Their names are all planets. Like you, you think know. So you think Neptune's evil? Oh, I don't think, I think he's, he's a evil. Probably. Yeah, no, no definitely. But, he, it's, he's the perfect guy. He's the nice guy. He's with the good guys. Seeing all their stuff is always playful, always having fun with them, trying to relate. And he has the same name, you know, Mercury. And they have other names that relate to Neptune. It's so, it's like in that same hierarchy, See? pantheon of gods. Well, I really don't but care her name was Emerald. That's just And his a hair color. is gray. Mercury's gray. I'm just saying. He's a I refuse to accept it until when it's I'm right, right in my Aaron face. And I will high five, and we will be right. <laughs> You'll cry it totally high five doesn't matter because he has one of my favorite weapons. What the, the kick shoes? The hall? Hulb- no, oh not Mercury. Gosh. Um, Neptune. Oh, the the halberd plasma rifle yeah. thing. <laughs> no, that thing was sweet. <laughs> one of my problems with this season, though, like overall, obviously, it was great, but um. Neptune and Sun didn't get to do much no, and I love at Sun. all. And, I, like, and I, Sun wait. had one of my favorite weapons with the gun chucks. Yeah, and it's Michael doing stuff. his voice, which is even better. Right, I Michael from Rage Michael Quit. I think that's just because they just didn't really care at that point. They're just like, yeah, hey, let's go get some noodles. Debbie but, does. But <laughs> they're in the middle of a battle. Why would you leave? I'd go get some noodles. <laughs> After seeing my friends do that, <sighs> like, that much damage you don't to a need cafeteria. To I don't need to help them. I'm good. I'll just See, go get some noodles. That's what I'm they threw they... me off a highway. I have done my effort in way, terms though. of the good light. I hope they get for the like good their guys. Own I have done my effort. I got thrown off a highway for the good guys. Yeah. I, I, my day is done. And that's why they should have an episode just their antics through the city. Just an entire episode covering them just being themselves, like being lazy, being just deputies, being <laughs> and just doing whatever. <laughs> just wandering around the city being hooligans. Yeah, that's. I just want to see that. I love that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I do like Neptune for what we've. Although he hasn't had a lot of character development, but I do like what we've seen during of him. the dance. He did have that one thing with John. Yeah, well, I, I, I would like that because he's kind of like he's so cool, but then he can't dance, yeah. so and super awkward Which is about hilarious. it. You'd rather break a girl's heart, yep, than be embarrassed, yeah, because yep. you can't move your body in rhythm to music. Yeah, 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 yeah Patrick Swayze, that's what they need. It's just Patrick Swayze. <laughs> there was one quote there. Actually, uh, John was talking to uh, Neptune. And he was like, "Actually, if you if you could stop being so cool, I'd appreciate it." Actually, yeah, yeah no, that. that <laughs> I I just like, please don't lie to my face. Teeth shine. Oh yeah, Ding. that was pretty great. Um, teeth and also, ding. earlier on in the show, there's this there is an overarching, very political plot line in uh, Ruby Volume Two with Ironwood showing up, and he's constantly talking with Ozpin and Goodwitch about like this whole militaristic. And thing. there we have season three. I robot. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee that's what's gonna happen. You saw how bad the thing is. They way they the, the robots may not be like singularly powerful, but in swarm, you saw what they did. Yeah, no, but like that's going to be the bad guys of oh. season three of those robots because oh, yeah, at the at the very end, Torchwick's like, yeah, I'm okay with being here. 
They're now running security for the tournament, which is season three. Not yeah. to mention good. what robots Cinder everywhere. Not to mention what Cinder put into like all those computers. Yeah, she probably hacked something. Infecting yeah, all the so robots. she will probably. Do, I'm not saying like Ironwood's a villain, but yeah, like his robots will be used. I cannot think of like, a single huh? piece of medium, or I can't think of a single like piece of fiction out there where you involve like a large body of robot soldiers that start out for the good guys, <laughs> where they don't turn bad at some point. <laughs> That's true. Like actually. it's got iRobot written all over it. I, yeah, and it, and right. it's also worth noting that Torchwick said um, in episode four that we got these mechs off the factory lines from our benefactor. And mm -hmm. obviously it seems to be talking about Cinder, but then how did she get those mechs? Because those are Ironwood's mechs. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's a leak within his huh, organization, maybe. Gundam! All the good guys' Gundams are fine because they die. <laughs> but they're not turned to the bad guys. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Okay, I guess those, those are those are mechs, not robots. So that's different. Oh, no. I guess there's I guess there's always transformers, but at that point there are also <laughs> no. bad robots. You're right. So actually, just Star Scream. Something. All right, Torchwick. Compare that to Torchwood from like I, the spinoff of Doctor Who. Torchwood. I like Torchwood. Yeah, Cybermen. Yeah. There robots. you go. Tie-ins. Whoa, Illuminati. <laughs> I don't. I haven't seen Doctor Who, so I don't get it, but. I'll trust you know what you're talking yeah, about. I'm kind of surprised at that, actually. No, I've never seen it. Well, actually, I've really? seen a little bit of Doctor Who because my sister's watched You've it. You've never seen Doctor Who? No. Really? You knave. My, I'm a knave? Yes. What, what? <laughs> but uh, I also loved in episode two, there was a whole thing where um, all the girls were playing like Yu-Gi-Oh, basically. And she's like, you activate oh. my trap card. Oh, God, yes. And they were getting all into it. And like yeah. Weiss and Ruby started crying. Was it game that got since, wiped in the beginning? Since I've gotten into yeah. Magic the Gathering since that episode, I totally relate to that episode. Oh, no. They were all exemplifying how you feel in a card game when it's more than two people. Because <laughs> one person gets destroyed Mark. while the rest build up. With his stupid no, I, I think it was. Yeah. Was it Weiss who like finally understood it? Or was it Yang? That was, was like I have all these things. It was like, Weiss. No. Yeah. Okay. And she immediately gets countered by. I think wasn't yeah. it Blake that knew everything? Uh, no, it was Yang because Blake was being all like, "I'm not gonna play because I'm yeah. being serious." <laughs> That's right. And they said, "Quit being poopy." I'm so deep and emotional. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna be ashamed to say that I still played Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh online. Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. yeah. online's great. Now, that is, is great. Yeah. yeah so is. I can defend that. No, but I, still, I, I saw my deck at home somewhere. Subliminal. No pendulums. I, not playing with those monsters. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I was I was looking for my decks a little while ago because my friends and I were going to play it over the summer, but all my old cards are gone through Aww. a yard sale probably. Bob. But it's okay because I've still got say? the Pokemon cards, and now I have Magic cards, which was probably a poor mistake. decision. <laughs> but you know what? It's a mistake I'm going to enjoy. Together. Yeah. Together forever. Do 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 do. Oh, God. Come back scary. to the dark side. I also Darkness has come for you. If I remember... <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, there was like a trailer for Volume Two, two that showed off like this, the one shot of um, Ruby holding Weiss's body and screaming like "No," you know, which actually happens in the first episode with the food fight, and they make it like this really over dramatic thing when it it's is totally Teeth. not. I mean, of course, so they kind of trolled us, I well, think, with yeah. that trailer there. I mean, a they 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 always do things like that in trailers, though. I mean, that's what trailers are designed to do. Yeah, they really kind of are. I had to think. What if? What do you think that? I don't think that it would be, but do you think Penny is also kind of connected to the mainframe of robots? Well, mm, no. She doesn't seem like it because she she's keeps, special. She okay, because then she won't get corrupted and I'll be she's okay. She's a real girl. She keeps talking about her father and oh, Mr. Ironwood. What if she was actually Not made like, to her fight them? Her father, Mr. Ironwood. Like, so right. turn her to fight them? Oh my god, they wouldn't be able to fight her. Oh no, it's going to be friends. robots versus robots. Like her father knows. No, but if she like, turned to fight like Ruby and the team, they'd be too afraid to fight her because she's a friend. And she just well, starts whopping them. Her eyes just turn red. And she and turns. <laughs> and oh! She goes, all, the bad guys I'll get her <laughs> If that happens, I will be jazzed. I hey, I'm, I'm all for the bad guys winning. <laughs> Why? I love it when okay, that happens. What's his face? I forget No one else does. You're overrated. Torchwick? Yeah. Oh, Torchwick is his name. Yeah. <laughs> right. I love Torchwick. Sorry, I forgot that's his actual name. He is such a good villain. Yeah. Getting into that, I suppose there is the whole little arc there, and I think episodes three and four with Penny and Ruby, and kind of getting into what we everybody guessed from season one that Penny is a robot. Like, that wasn't Beep, really a surprise. Was that, that totally not hidden fact Super like guns in her. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me while I just Disengage. turn into a Gauss cannon and <laughs> destroy a couple planes. Yeah, but it is interesting that she does say, like, one day I'm going to have to save the world, you know? Like, she's obviously been being trained and built for a very specific, like, purpose, perhaps for whatever this conflict is that Ironwood oh, yeah. and Ozpin are worried about. She's got to kill all humans one day. It's her destiny. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're special. Exterminate all the Xenos. You're special, all church. Humans. You're special, kill church. Get humans. rid of the organics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was all, and then there was also a whole thing where, like, they, the Ruby team all went into the city, and um, Yang went back to the... Uh, to the club from the trailer, so which, which I love. Get out of my that, club. <laughs> that, that is one thing I don't like about Ruby. I can actively say is that they bring in source material 
that you are supposed to kind of already recognize from trailers that not everybody has seen. Well, the trailers were the first things released for Ruby, so if you're watching chronological order, True, you should know them. But at that point, only the people who were like excited about it and who knew about Rooster Teeth know about them. Like Brittany still hasn't seen the trailers for Ruby, but she's seen all of the rest of Ruby. Because I never bothered to go back and show her the trailers. Because you daft know. fool. Yeah. yeah. Well, honestly, for a while there, I wasn't sure it's if the trailers kind of... were canon, but now we yeah, know that they I forgot are. About, like, Especially with I, I mean, the end with Blake's guy. I was about yeah, to say Adam. that. I forgot who he was completely until like she told me. Yeah. Actually, there was a shot I think early on where you saw like him scribbled in her notebook, like a picture of him. Mm-hmm. You know, just hammering that in a little harder. Yeah. I don't know. I think they should have at least like. I don't know. I think they should have, like, re-released those, like, at least the story-relevant parts of those as, like, something that wasn't a trailer. Like, not a filler because episode, listing, but, it, like, you can do it as an in-between. Listing them as trailers is almost misleading. Like, yeah. they're basically just, like, well, mini episodes. And, and I think because of that, like, the Ruby and Weiss ones had, like, no voice acting in them at all, and I don't think those ones are canon, because in that one, like, in Ruby's one, she kills, like, a thousand of those wolf creatures, and I mm. doubt that's canon because she's not that not strong. Yet. Not yet. It could be like, that. is that a flash forward? Maybe. She you know. If you, if you look really carefully in Yang's so one. Ash. Um, How long has he been on a journey? <laughs> lol. It's both one's a different story. But no, in he's Yang in Sing, where she's like um, harassing Junior, and he's like, Have you seen this woman? And like looking at like her phone. And at first, I thought it was Blake because I just saw the black hair. But now it kind of looks like the girl that. Uh, appeared in the train. No, yeah, void portal, void portal, mom. Yeah, mom, void portals. Oh, see, I like, thought. What do you know about this? And he's like, I don't know. I've never seen it before. And Rah. all that. I-, I thought she was asking him about like Torchwick and stuff. He was like, No, he took my men and they never came back. No, that, no, in that the was in the episode. Trailer. Oh, in the trailer. You're yeah. probably right about that because she's looking for a mom. Like that's yeah. a plot point. How do you remember the trailer? Mm-hmm. She's got a good memory, unlike she some people do you here. Dude, you you, you know how many times <laughs> I've listened to I Burn? Like, I've seen the... Like, once? <laughs> I think more than once, I'd be At safe to say. Um, and then episode four definitely had one of my favorite moments from the show, the fight with the mech that Torchwick was piloting, where they're all oh doing their God. team attacks, and Yang did her Dude, you know, he Super Saiyan wrecked. thing. I love how much he gets Yang. his butt kicked. He really does. Oh, what did yeah. you compare him to, Jack Splicer? I remember a that. Bit. He is the Jack Splicer. <laughs> he doesn't have a woo ya yet. Well, he kind of sure, does, woo-yah. but not really. I don't know. Once again, I was kind of sad the robot didn't win, but that's just me. Well, he's got more. I know, but that's kind of that kind of defeats the purpose of a war mech. That's why Look, you have multiple. I have this undefeatable robot that gets defeated immediately. But then that's because they well, exploited its weaknesses. They are god children, too. So. <laughs> that's true. They, they have anime powers. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, have you seen a kawaii they Yang goes Super Saiyan. She does. They really aren't hiding the Super Saiyan thing, because part of the thing with Saiyans was Her like, glows. you know, they got stronger after they almost died in a battle, you know, yeah. so it's pretty obvious. And her hair literally is glowing yellow. See, they yeah. they revealed all the the semblances or whatever for the Team Ruby. They have, yes. How many do we know from... Juniper? Juniper, yeah. Well, uh, Any of them? Uh, no. Uh, well, per- we know. Piero's is magnetism. Yeah, we, we know, know that, that one. Um, Ren's is maybe... Ren's and Nora's I don't think we know. I mean, definitely they, they, they show Ren using whatever his is, but he's like, I don't know, like energy shielding or something. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Maybe that's something everybody can do. I don't know. And then Jean's is the big mystery one. Oh, he's he's too weak to know what his is right now, but he'll figure it out. When he does, he'll be the biggest badass in the show. See, I'm saying, see, I'm hoping that like Norris is like she shoots like a particle cannon out of her chest or something. <laughs> <laughs> just something. Was... She's already BA, so I mean, just make no, it that, even that's more. Gonna be, um, that's going to be Penny. She's just going to go like super ultra laser mode. <laughs> Target acquired. Love that. Um, then episode five, we're getting to the the dance arc. That's where Pira totally owned um, Cardin's team, like fighting all four By of them herself. at once. Yeah. It was awesome. Like She's not like, even hey. breaking a sweat. She's like, I right, guys, next. I mean, what, his name's Cardigan. Like Cardigan did a pretty good job. Uh, <laughs> Cardin. Okay, but he did a pretty good job until he didn't, because he didn't even touch her. Oh, he hit her like once or twice. Yeah, I mean they they no, they really didn't even hit her actually. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part is when he hits his own guy, and I was like, good job, guys. <laughs> good job. Although I do like it, like the you know Neptune. Uh, no, not Neptune. Uh, Mercury fights her in battle, you know, With and the then gives up. Yeah, but uh, but it sort of shows that like part of the reason why she always evades those attacks is because she's using her magnetism powers, like just move it like a couple centimeters so like that their blades miss her and stuff like that. That's Which not is really cheating. awesome. It's not cheating. Yeah, she's, she's using, just her, using her powers. You know, but the point was that she was doing it in a way that it wasn't obvious what her power was. Yeah. So she's keeping it kind of on the but down low. But then Mercury low. found out because he's like, hey. <laughs> and I now, never she's, now she's going to be removed. I no! A, I don't know. I'm, Swiftly. I'm I curious. so hard. Does, uh, does Mark like Mercury? Because I figured he would since he's got like the same Sanji kicking. I think he liked him for the kick. I like him for that. 
That's why I like, I, I like the villains. Like, there's no villain I actually don't enjoy. Because so no. far, like, I don't have a character I really hate I yet. Don't, I don't really care for Emerald, but the other ones I like. I mean, Emerald's yeah. okay, but she's kind of bland. She's, I, she's just sort of generic. Mercury is at least a little bit, I don't more know. More interesting. Yeah. Or more apathetic. <laughs> they do rough up that one uh, shopkeep in the uh, bookstore. Oh, yeah. You Wolverine? No, he, did. <laughs> he was Wolverine, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he? was. <laughs> yeah, they killed Wolverine in the first Not episode. Wolverine? Yeah. Actually, no, they didn't, because he can't die. And honestly... Right. um. Cinder's voice actress, I think she's one of, like, I want to say she's Yang's voice actress. I'm not sure on that. But she, uh, she's not always the best oh, for me. I hate she's her She's so, voice. like, cryptic and just, she's so oh, stereotypical Roman. villain, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. We'll see what happens in those, moments in time. Those, the, that, like, those lines at the end of the first season, like, oh, Roman, you'll know what you need to know when you need to know it. I just, like, face yeah. death at that point because <laughs> I was like, really? Thank you. I'm sure he wouldn't have understand that, given that he's like at least twice as streetwise as you are. Yeah, she, she take lessons from Aku. He's a real villain. <laughs> <laughs> Just be Aku, as, as, ha- of you. as hammy as possible. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then lose every fight. And uh, but it is interesting that like the villains add Pura to this list, you know, after that fight, and we don't really know what that she list is. She's like a legendary warrior. No. Like, She's gonna do. Nope. I'm telling you, she's gonna be the Captain America. She's even got the shield. I'm convinced. Like, what I think might play out is either like I feel like he won't die, but I feel like they might have him like um John defending her and dying for her kind of thing. And his semblance is like his great sacrifice using his semblance kind of thing. <laughs> what his semblance is like resurrection or something? Yeah, and then he comes back. <laughs> I can believe it. I like, am a literally a like, god. Like for a moment, he just becomes immortal. <laughs> yeah, just get stabbed. He's like, guys, John I'm alive. Like, we'll fight. Regrows wings. I, I wouldn't surprise me it, with his whole angelic sort of thing John he's got. Well, he's, he's John uh, Joan of Arc. I know, I, so it, the it wings does, would be out of character. Honestly, I hadn't thought of that before, but I think Aaron's idea is pretty plausible because usually whenever you have a character who's like the best at what they do they're eventually gonna lose or yeah. be killed mm-hmm. uh, especially when they're targeted specifically by the villains she's definitely gonna although get it's difficult to gauge exactly how far this show is willing to go because I'm not I'm not very familiar with Rooster Teeth unlike some of you so I really don't know like how dark they tend to get church dies oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, well it comes back as a ghost yeah. but I don't know they have they have, they have killed know. characters in red versus blue before although that's most that's much more of a comedy show than this is and yeah. I don't know there's season two is it, you, the the vil, the heroes win by the end but they really don't like there's a lot of you know uncertainty at the end I, would, and I oh, definitely I would, think they're building something really dark I was actually kind of disappointed with the ending because I thought they were gonna have to evacuate the entire city I yeah. was really hoping for that. Yeah, I know. And then they sealed up really. I mean, you get to watch all of them fight. And, oh my oh gosh, my those new God. fighters! Oh my God, she was just she noped that. <laughs> that and his freaking thermos. Yes. She's just like, it's no, this mug. is done being broken. This and is the fixed now. Puppy dog. The okay, <laughs> that corgi. We talk about that corgi's a robot. This was <laughs> fired from oh a God, cannon yeah. through three robots. Well, that thing could be real. It looks like a robot. So. It was in a tube. I know it's an anime, and you can extrapolate that, but still, I feel like it's not. It's not a living dog. There's something different about it. Obviously, I could see the corgi being in charge of everyone. Just go, the like being in charge twist. of all the that's, evil people. What if that's Ruby's like, mom or dad? Which one of them died? Uh, the mom the disappeared. Mom. We don't know. That's what mom. <laughs> she put herself on a dog to hide herself. Well, no wait. Didn't no. one of didn't one of their moms die and the other one disappeared? Yang's, Yang's mom disappeared. disappeared. I think Ruby's mom is dead. Uh, because they have different moms. They have yeah, the they have dad. different moms. I'm pretty sure one of them is dead. I'm pretty sure the other one is the one wait, who was on the train. It's Yang's mom that left. Yeah. 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 It's Yang's, yeah, Yang's mom, mom left. left. Okay, yeah. and I th- I think maybe. Summer Rose is dead because in like Ruby's trailer she's at a gravestone. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so yeah. I think you might be right on that. Yeah. Plus, otherwise, and Yang has the backstory that's why saying, like, "How else would they have been sisters?" Yeah, and right. Yang's like, "Yeah, Ruby's mom wasn't his first love. It was my mom, and all that jazz." And oh yeah, and th- this was also the episode five was where um John and Pure were talking, and he was talking about how like he he asked White's out, you know that didn't work out, and it was all about how. Oh, you know, if, if a boy, if no boy asks you out to the dance, you know, I'll go in a dress, you know. And guess what? And it's like, she was, John, you're so thick. Yeah, she's making it so obvious that she likes him and he didn't realize it. It's and that, John's like, hey. and then, <laughs> it made then, me so pissed. Then suddenly very, like, like, sensible, practical advice from Nora out of complete left field. The character yeah. who up to this point has been essentially just com- completely <laughs> spastic. Yeah. Suddenly goes practice what you peach or preach. Practice Pira. what you peaches. <laughs> practice your peaches. And then practice. suddenly Pira looks really sad, 
God, that depression for like two minutes there. Oh my God, <laughs> two that was real. <laughs> it was no, also I just headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> what I love though is the fact that I watched a video of like you know the dance they do at the end of that episode. I right. saw it with everybody else, but who it really was. Like I saw you saw the video where they had like the wolves dancing, the villains I laughed dancing. So Have you seen that? Hard. Oh, I haven't seen no, that. Rooster Teeth oh. released reskin, just random characters doing that dance. So I didn't know who it really they just, was. They just applied like the different models to the same uh, animation. Yeah. So you had like Torchwick, Cinder, Mercury, and everyone. <laughs> or again, oh, like, I'll have to look that and up. And they had all the Grim doing it at the end. I laughed so. They called. It was like um, Ruby's team. Like, yeah, they're doing a dance, but when I saw John address. I was like, what? Because I didn't what? expect that to be the dance, and it was so much better. <laughs> Even Ren danced. It was great. Yeah, which Poor, is surprising, actually. Yeah, I know, right? What's Poor happening? Ren. What? It's, what's happening? It's it's just the show that's designed to make Ren uncomfortable. I, I, oh I'm, my god, he's in the towel after the show. <laughs> he's so, reaching he's slowly like, for the I, most. We're best friends, <laughs> Ren. Even though you barely ever talk, and I don't really know that much about you, but we're best friends, right? <laughs> And I, you. And w I'm curious, Claire, what did you think when um, he was talking about Ren and Nora, and Nora's like, actually, we're not together, you know? Because I yet. know your shipping heart is probably... Yeah, I was like, yet. <laughs> it won't last for long, according to Clara. No, no. Uh, I I think if they're not going to end up romantically together, they're just going to be best friends, soulmates, and never leave each other's side. So I'll be happy with either. There you go. And I also... I, I have a strong feeling that Ren is either aromantic or asexual. So, like, he either doesn't have any reason for anything romantic or, like, I don't know. I feel like romance isn't his thing, like, yeah. at all. Well, I get the feeling that right now he and Nora are just, like, lifelong friends sort of thing. Right. Or Until they date. rather, Ren sees it as lifelong friends, or rather, this girl who just started following me one day. <laughs> and it's Nora's crazy, like, girl. man, he's so dreamy, but I'm queen of the castle. And then she just goes off and does She's her own thing. She's too aggressive, and he's just so passive. They just balance each other. That's why other. they're perfect. Yeah. And um, this is also, I, I do love how um, Yang, to get Blake's attention, because around there, Blake's being all like, I'm not going to do the dance, because I'm being super serious. She gets a... Uh, are you okay there, guys? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. Pointer. Yeah, no, she's always like that. She's, like, way too depressing. I understand why she's sad, but she just does not pick up during, like, the entire second season. Well, that's because like she's end. deep and secret. Mm. It's only yeah. the end where she kind of picks up more. Well, but still. the whole point of that was Yang gets to talk to her by using a laser pointer, which I thought was great because Blake's a cat. And it's great. That is, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, but was, yeah, that's where Yang talked to her about, like, the backstory with her and Ruby, like, how she, Ruby nearly died, you know, and how she's looking for her mom. And so they both kind of have this thing, this quest they're trying to solve. My backstory is just as depressing as yours, so suck it up. Basically. You know, and, like, eventually did come to the dance, you know, with Sun, which was nice to that see. It was yeah. cute. Because you know, he, he understands the formality of a suit, not at all. He was no. wearing just a tie. <laughs> he top. tried really hard. Yeah. He yeah. tried a little bit. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't he try wore a tie, at, at least. A for effort. He barely yeah. put it on. But he <laughs> barely added it on. <laughs> but he tried. He gets an A for effort. And he least. had a black shirt this time. One, actually... On that same note, one of the things I really did like is that you get to see all, like, the students from all the different countries and how mm -hmm. they're all differently dressed. And I think, what is it, Vacuo is where Sun's from? And, like, when I you think see, they're Haven, actually. When you, when you see the – well, regardless, the one that Sun's from, when you see them all standing there, they're all just wearing, like, street clothes, unbuttoned shirts and things, and then, like, the other three schools are all wearing uniforms. I you can tell the that, difference. Actually, but that's yeah, the ruffians. No, I actually paused it a couple of times to actually look and see what all the different countries were wearing. And yeah. Atlas, of course, was wearing like buttoned up white futuristic things. I'm like, oh, you yeah. are all going to die. Well, it's, yeah. it's worth talking about that. Um, that in the previous season of the show, like any background character was just like a black silhouette. You know, whereas this time around, they actually like animated those characters. I didn't even notice just, that. Well, You're right. They did. Red bricks. So like. It, Overall, like, they definitely, well, well, there's still some animation issues in Ruby. Like, you can tell it's not the most professional thing in the world. It took a big step up from season one, which I appreciated. Also, yeah. the writing, I definitely think, took a step That's something that bothered me, up. the whole fact that, I mean, I understand for, like, budgeting and just for, like, actually editing them. I, I get it, but it's still kind of bothering me because I'm, I guess, spoiled by anime where everything's always animated. Except background. in some anime, the background Even characters then, are right. black like that. Okay, Psychopaths, then. I'm spoiled by Psychopaths. <laughs> That's fair enough. More like Fate Zero, because Fate Zero looks oh, Fate stupidly so, pretty. Oh, yeah. But, uh. Eventually, you know, finally John and Pira, like, John shows up in the dress and, and you know, great. realizes oh that he's been an idiot, which, you know, made me, mm, I'm satisfied great. it actually happened, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was being so mad at him earlier. Oh, and yeah. then there was no more depth for that relationship until well, next season. I went into a different arc, so. Well, yeah. But, I know. I mean, they probably just make out all the time. Still, like, they could have at least, no, like, they're not together yet. alluded to what happened. Oh, I mean, are they, they showed that she was, like, watching him. Like, she always watches him and makes sure he's okay, and then he took down the, uh, the, uh, Ursa. The giant, like, and bear And she was thing. like, I am proud. 
Yeah, because you're supposed she to think, was. oh, she went and saved. That's what I thought. And I was like, oh no, John's finally taking care of things himself. He got so his first. He got his first kill. Yeah, I did. Like, all by himself. He wrecked that thing. I don't too. think it's his first, but no, it is. Is it? Yeah, because he only well, took down the other Ursa with uh, Pyrrha's help. But he didn't know that. Right. But this yeah. is his first all by himself, and we know that. Because Pyrrha's like Emperor Palpatine, just like controlling from the sidelines. Tweak. <laughs> Tweak. <laughs> Strike for its heart, young one. That feels <laughs> a lot that, less sinister. That would be a good ending. <laughs> She's a villain all evil along. Emperor oh, Pyrrha. Okay. <laughs> you find, oh my gosh. And suddenly she trains everyone to be a Greek. She has to get a Pyrrhic victory at least. <laughs> Ah. Killing all of her friends, so she's the last hey, one. That's actually a good point. I hadn't thought of that pure pyrrhic victory, which is like a you know a very 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 costly bitter, victory. very yeah. costly victory. Maybe going into more of the she's Captain the character America to Sam. die. What if she loses her ability to fight? Like she doesn't die. She just can never fight again. She just goes like a cripple. And gets crippled. <laughs> Woo! Oh, don't worry, we don't need you right now. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> well, that would be so me. feelsy. But <laughs> don't I can see do that this. Happening. Please do this. <laughs> Aaron's like, I want the suffering. Give it to I me. Oh, I love it. You'll be picking my sad. Sobbing corpse off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll put you somewhere it's you okay. I, I'm already doing that in other games. Yeah, her weapons, her weapons are destroyed. <laughs> yep. Just all of her weapons. Nope, are her weapons are gone. Everyone ability she, to fight. Or really. she's just like she's sent to a void world where it's only her. Okay. I don't think else. that's a thing. Are we, she's going to the shadow realm. Is that what you're saying? There you go. <laughs> Trapped in a VHS realm. tape. Banish her to the shadow realm. Um, Grandpa, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think is going on then? Because uh, um, Cinder goes and hacks the tower place and escapes from Ruby. Um, but you see that shot of like the queen piece in the computer. So, what did she do there? Robots. So really don't know. Queen takes pawns. Robots. Pawns equal robots. Well, see, obviously, um, Pierre let her in so she could hack it. Pyrrha didn't let her in. Yeah, no, Pyrrha, see, she's the mastermind. <laughs> Emperor Pyrrha. We were just over this. <laughs> what, okay. Aww. She guided her hands with magnetics. She is Magneto in this. She is Mag Well, she's not nearly as powerful as Magneto, but. Oh, but from what we've seen. From what we've we seen. don't know. She's going to lift the entire city by herself. <laughs> Pyrrha will victorious. Wait, that came out weird. <laughs> Pyrrha, Pyrrha will, will victorious. victorious. Honor the privilege at my feet. <laughs> yep. Way to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so then we get to, like, the last arc, which is the whole thing where they go on this field trip to, uh, you know, to the city. And I, I did kind of appreciate how Ozpin was like, you know, I know you're going to go off to this place, like, no matter what, because you guys always make the rules. So I'm just going to bend them for you. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, and it was kind of like a haha -ha thing. But at the same time, he was it also sort of seemed like, like the way he was talking to Ruby around Ironwood. He was sending them, like, a scout. Like, I know you guys are in on this whole Torchwood thing, so go figure out what he's doing. Yeah, so Ironwood is Torchwood. Torchwood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Torchwood thing. You've embedded it in his mind. I know. I know. That means Captain Jack Harkness has to show up now. He's be oh in the God. show. Hello his semblance is immortality. <laughs> exactly. He'll just keep coming back. Wait, you can't kill me. That's Every what happens you... with Jack. John is, is Captain De Jack Harkness yes. <laughs> in a different universe. <laughs> accepted headcanon. He's the 12th incarnation of Stabby. No. <laughs> I can believe it. All right. He has a sword. And this might be a good opportunity to bring up the whole Ozpin um, Ironwood thing, because it sounds like, Aaron, you had some interest issues with Ozpin, because honestly, while well, Ironwood is obviously kind of being like the militaristic, you know, I'm too aggressive sort of I'm guy. I'm going to protect everyone at, because it's my job. At the I same time, I do agree with him that Ozpin is being extremely passive about everything. That's because Ozpin, as of yet, has zero depth. He what? is just he is just kind of there well, as the enabler. He's cryptic and a headmaster. Like every headmaster should be. He is cryptic about something. Yep, and he has the control I, of time, but he doesn't use it for some reason. I he feel like time. he doesn't want. Dude, he to lives. He, he, he lives a in a clock motif. tower. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably time. <laughs> I, I feel like it's extremely dangerous though when he does use his power, so he doesn't want to. And he doesn't want the kids. Fought. He could. He could he at least. He doesn't want the kids to fight. He's trying to keep them away from it as long as possible because he probably knows the dangers of all of this. I understand where he's. But he could at least act like he's interested. Maybe and like the, uh, he has better things to do, or like he doesn't have better things to do than just drink coffee at his desk. But maybe the cost of his power is killing a main character. He doesn't want to do that yet. There you go. That's no. how Pyrrha dies. He has to sacrifice her to save Although, everyone. Else. If you die, we can save everyone. She's there was like, one scene where Ozpin and Ironwood were talking in his office, and he was like, "Uh, you know, you're just gonna wait until like the." They're knocking on our doorstep, like coming here to kill us. And he's like, "No, we gotta wait until we learn more because we know that there's more going on to this, you know, than it seems. You know, don't jump in too quickly, don't act too hastily." Yes. Which I get. He's playing the long game, and uh, Goodwitch says something cryptic about how he has more experience than her Ironwood. So I wonder what that means too. Actually, he fought in the Great War. I can see Ospin dying next season. Yeah, like, maybe dying early on <laughs> next season. I could see that. Not but, early. He'd well, be a like, major death. Like mid. Like mid into the season, I could see him dying in a major plot point. Yeah, I know. We're always like, I don't know. I'd be really like, 
I, I, if, if they did that, I'd just look at that and go, what was the point of that character then? What if it was by another main <laughs> character, though? What if... Ironwood betrays them. I mean, yeah, what if he's tired of him trying to hold him back and he does it kind of in the a The robot's coming nah, and busting his I office. I don't get that vibe from Ironwood. He's he's about as lawful good as they get. Yeah. 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 He's not he's not evil, like, purposely going against Ozpin, because it sounds like they were friends. His you minions, know? however, his minions are neutral, neutral, and therefore can go any direction they want. <laughs> See, I, that's why I feel like with Ozpin, though, if he does die, he's going to give some kind of, like, super device to Ruby, like, all of my life's teachings, bring this. Like, turn like, a Dumbledore character, like, teaching after death. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I could I see, like, if, if the Academy, if Beacon was, like, assaulted by, like, an army of bad guys and, like, it was obvious that they were going to lose, I could see him holding them off by doing, like, some super attack that killed himself. What? He could do that. Yeah. Or maybe stop. We're still assuming that anyone's going to die. Like, right. Which, There's honestly, that, uh, very well could yet. happen. There's something that has been, like confusing me since like the first episode of Ruby ever mm-hmm. is when he meets Ruby he ever. looks at her and goes silver eyes so I don't know why that stuck with me but do you think maybe he knew Summer Rose or maybe he knows something well, about he, Ruby he knows her uncle very well right. yeah because there, he he gets right. a text from him at the end of the first season right so but I mean like it stands to logic that how he, close is he with the family then probably very uh, I think um and wasn't it Ruby it was and Yang never have wasn't it said that it was the, the, the their team as youngsters was Ozpin, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Summer Rose, Yang's mom, and then Ruby's uh, and uh, Yang's dad. Like, so were, they were characters. a team. I thought it was I Crow, think. plus the three of them. Was it Crow? I'm pretty sure it was Crow. I think oh. you might be right because he was yeah. the uncle. Yeah, of no, Ruby. But if if Ozpin was like a close family friend and. Given how cryptic and mysterious he's been this season, it's entirely possible yeah. he's just like, he's no, related. don't, don't bring me, don't bring your daughters yeah. here. That would be really awkward. And I have better <laughs> things to do, like drink my coffee in my clock tower. Because also in that first episode, fun. he figured out that Ruby was related to Crow because she had the scythe, and like that was Crow's weapon and all that. So I definitely think there's a connection there. Maybe it is the Silver Eyes is like a genetic. Glad thing. his name is Crow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Summer also, Ruby. Yeah. Crow. Well. It, Speaking of that, there was a whole explanation there about how, like, there was this great war 80 years ago and it had something to do with arts and individuality. Thus, the parents named all their kids after colors as, like, a sign of fighting that. Is and that hippies? <laughs> I guess they are hippies. Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like they could have just le- le- left it at their names are colors. They didn't really need an explanation for it, I don't think. I mean, it's a minor thing. Whatever, they had to move it with free love. But can we talk about how, like, colors. on the train, like, no one fought the person they should have been fighting? The train? Well, so you think someone else should have fought Neo? Oh, definitely anyone else but Yang. Like, maybe even Blake. Because Blake, her whole thing is that, like, she disappears and attacks from shadows. And if you can't predict where she's coming from, you can't block her. Yang is 100% predictable. She screams at you. like. Well, no one knew she, who she was going to do. So Yang's right. like, I'll do this. But no, even, like... They literally sent Blake to go fight Torchwick, Torch, yeah, Torchwick, who can so very easily emotionally just attack her and be like, oh, look at all these things. You're supposed to join us, and I'm making you emotionally compromised, and you're going to falter. Mm. Like, it was all about revenge. I know. For With Yang, though, I think the reason she was like, I want to fight her was because she saved Torchwick back in episode four when Yang was going to, like, punch her, you know, and, like, shattered into glass that whole bit. Right. So I think it was, it was, it was a revenge thing. Right, you know, and, rematch. like, we know that Blake wants to be Torchwick, and, like, even the chainsaw guy, I feel like someone better than Weiss could have handled it. Well, well Weiss so was sure. doing pretty good until he, like, grabbed her face. Right, but <laughs> she, no she face can't hug. do well against, like, brute strength like that. She has to be able to attack from a distance, and he I gets guess. pretty close. Well, it's kind of like their counters. Like, they all fought people who could beat them. Right. Or had a chance to beat them. And, like, there's normally no reason that, like... Ruby should have been on like top of the train because it doesn't really help her fight things. Well, like her holding is speed, and if she has nowhere to speed to, well, but the argument could be made she was going to speed to the head of the train because but she, she and uh, Ublock were supposed to go stop the train and pretty much totally failed at that. Right, but I feel like even Ruby would have been good with Neo because she's so fast. I get. I don't know. I I feel like whichever of the four of them fought Neo, they would have lost because Neo is obviously pretty strong. I, I like, feel Blake or Ruby would have had the best chance because of speed and the diversion. Speed Possibly. is key. I don't I know. I mean, all the dust that uh, Blake got to do. Yeah. That I, was so I cool. Don't, it was cool. I don't understand why Weiss doesn't give her that dust, like, all the time. Cause it it made her. a bunch. I know. Well, she's a what? Her, she's a her, schnee. Her family, like, owns 
Yeah, the but they probably though. give her some type of stipend. She like puts it into she her had, gun like, thing and then starts like freezing yeah, Torchwick and all that stuff. Weapon, right. Though. Sorry. So I why did, I don't know? She should do that all the time. It made her so much more powerful. Could do make anybody more powerful. But then the old this is going to make me sound it. stupid. But I keep I kept thinking that dust was supposed to be like a drug. I thought it was a drug too. That's why I was stuck. I was like because. Like, in every other fiction, Drug? Dust is, like, some kind of anagram for... Like, one of my favorite shows, Babylon 5, Dust is literally, like, a super narcotic for telepaths. Yeah. And that's all I could think of the first two episodes. Yeah, that's why I heard, like, Dust, right? And Drug, like, no, it's yeah. raping. So I was like, yeah. oh, Make rapings. you experience... Basically, mind rape. Hey, bro. It's really weird. Do you want some Dust? You want some exactly. Dust, guys? <laughs> dust for your guns? Dust for your guns. <laughs> but no, she, she can't give them... She can't be generous all the time because that would involve the old money being very generous. <laughs> money. Wait, that's a good question, though. Instead of a black market, do they have a rainbow market? Ha, <laughs> 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 Welcome to the rainbow market. <laughs> Given that they sell Warmex, among other things, on this black market, probably not. Phew. It's a rainbow It coalition. is worth mentioning, Q, though, Q, that... Q. While she is a schnee, she obviously is kind of estranged from her family because yeah. her dad's apparently kind of evil. She, she didn't even that. want to talk to her dad or sister. Which is definitely yeah. going to come up later. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I want to see your sister. Yeah. Also, one bit in there where that whole bit where they at the city where they basically went to like all their backstories, like why do we fight as, you know, um, huntresses, which I thought was gave some nice character development for those yeah. guys. Oh, his smile when uh, he knew that they were finally learning. Yes, it was nice. You know, yeah, the, the one. Didn't. The only one he didn't know, or the only one he didn't ask, was the only one who actually knew. Was Ruby? She's yeah. just like, I want to be a hero. That's and then she was useless it. without her. <laughs> yes. Sight. That was so. Because really kind of I thought she was gonna flop the guy. She was so weak. The guy was like, nah. And that's, then just knocked her. That's out. that's why I want to see bad. somebody who doesn't like that. That's gonna be when you meet the god tier character who doesn't use a weapon. Yeah. Well, oh, and ready. honestly, I wouldn't mind if like in in the third season that starts an arc with Ruby like Yang, train me in hand to hand combat because I'm super weak at that. Because I feel like the most competent might actually be Blake, because she is a faunus and she is trained to be agile as crap, so... Well, I true, guess. but... But Ruby's supposedly the fastest character because of her But even semblance. then, like, she could have used that but didn't. Yeah. She could have just charged them. Because speed... No, you don't need strength if you're speeding towards someone's face. Also, put put Sun and Blake's semblances together and you can have a little rock-paper-scissors match with their, like, clones. <laughs> that could be hilarious. Blake Shadows, Sun's energy beings, whatever they were. <laughs> yeah. Those were great, though. I well, want to see more tag teams with them. All right. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons I love the f the mech fight in episode four was because they were doing like combining their powers to do like team attacks, which was what made it so cool. Uh, but also in that whole city bit, I liked the bit where Ruby and Oblong went and looked at the the Muma kill, you know, th off in the distance. Oh, yeah. And uh, he was talking about how like they're waiting, you know, for the opportunity to strike because they're smart. Or than your normal grim. You could tell they way overworked that voice actor though, because he was really struggling to read through some of those lines quickly. That's uh, Joel, the guy who plays Caboose in Red vs. Oh, Blue. Like, that makes it so much is better. It? I didn't even realize it is. that. Yeah, but uh, so yeah. Then true. the last yeah, episode, the train crashes into the city. All the grim are there, and basically it's just a battle royale, and it was pretty awesome. Oh my god, the was the first girl's name? What okay. is her name? I don't know. The guy who slam jammed oh. and destroyed all of them right off the bat with the huge sword. What, New Garen? <laughs> yeah, New Garen's my favorite. I love that guy. I know. I, I actually quite like the guy who looks like he's blind, who did like the punch to make it explode thing. Oh, yeah. And oh, then um, it literally... Yeah, Alex Mercer. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, they all, I mean, <laughs> Prototype. And then, like, personally, he did have a Gatling gun, though. Like, somebody pointed this out to me. Like, I think it was you. Like, she killed one of those flying creatures by herself, and it took the entire team last no, no. season to kill one. She did not kill. She cut well, in cut half. It in half. Wait, it's bullets. dead. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was something. Mm. There is some of that power creep there because, like, while they're fighting on the train, they take out like five of those mechs that took like all of them to do in episode four. And similarly, they fight like the scorpions and the birds, like they did in season one. A bunch of them in the last episode, and they just take them out like it's no business. Level up. One thing that Ruby physics have started. One, one part of Ruby physics that have started to bother me Dog. is how uh, bullets seem to get stronger with the individuals who are using them. <laughs> I mean, like how when like if someone just has like a machine gun, so, it's gonna be crap. For example, when they but. shot that bird all the time in season one, it did like nothing. And then when this chick takes this like it is a Gatling gun, gun, to be fair. True and she enough. Is the 18. Oh my god, I love launcher. everything she <laughs> is. Should still do some damage. Yeah, well, good point. She is the A team though. They're like oh, yeah, they're trying to OP the. See, yeah. yeah, she is like level fifty. They're like level twenty. See? I know, but she gets. How does that apply to bullets? <laughs> is my problem because her bullets are made bullets of pure and explosives. <laughs> Maybe her bolts are like I don't know the fist of God. What's like the rabbit faunus girl's name? Um, rabbit girl. I don't know. I swear, she, like Coco, I think. No, it's not Coco. I know what you're talking Wait, about. Wait, I think um, it's uh, Bismarck. Because she it had something, Bismarck. and then the first <laughs> girl was cool like, no, Bismarck. honey, you worked Ooh. on that all night. Let me do this. Which I thought, I almost thought that was like a fourth wall breaking joke. Like, I know all you fans that there want to see what the bunny girl can do, but I'm no, we're saving that for season three. <laughs> 
<gasps> and I I liked it though because she's like, hold on, ladies, I've got this. And like she even like smacks the other guy's butt, and I'm like, ooh girl, uh, ooh girl. You it was are also, definitely team is, commander. It's kind of cool to see um the uh, the mustache professor come out with his uh. Oh my gosh, his, we were waiting so his long for least that. practical weapon ever. Uh, yeah, that. the blunderbuss <laughs> fireball launcher. The, yeah, the blunderbuss <laughs> that would cut your arms off if you actually yep. used it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeremy was pretty excited seeing that one too, actually. Uh, but yeah, there's. Let's talk a bit about like the villains like plan because basically it seems uh, supposedly everything is going according to plan for Cinder and Tortric because they're totally fine with the fact that Tortric's been kidnapped and like that this thing with the Grim Beasts failed. They probably so assumed he got kidnapped at some point. I, I, so what is their overarching plan? Like, Why well, is it good that Tortric's kidnapped? Why is it good that the Grimm's attacked but they didn't do the much Grimm's damage? The Grimm's attacks, they saw how everybody fights except for the bunny girl. I mean, I guess the Grimm attacks led to Ironwood being put in charge of security for the Vital Festival. Yeah, so they can take over the robots. Which, yeah, maybe that is it. You know, it does make me wonder, you know, with uh, Torchwick being kidnapped, like, what's... Maybe if they... If she can implement the security, then maybe he can escape with, like, all the other criminals and round them up to form, like, a super... If it's all automated, gang. all she has to do is push a button and suddenly every door opens. Yeah, and see, they, you know, they saw already fight because Pierre's the villain. They saw Pierre fighting and her, like, <laughs> apprentice, which is John, is finally able to take down his first kill. They're like, good, Anakin, keep killing. Good, Anakin. Get more powerful. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why, that's why I can never you. buy... That's why I never buy into the whole robots are good guys things. Because if you take that human element out, there's always that chance that the robot will find something better to do. Father, what are feelings? <laughs> does this I... unit have a soul? Coke. No. I, it does make... I know. I'm fine if that's the case, like Cinder did, is doing this hack thing for the robots. I just hope they explain how she's that good at hacking that she can like do that or whatever. She's obviously I don't her, know like... she's got a god-tier weapon, so... I, I presume she's got. I suppose. She Although went to college I and got a mid it, minor. I did think it was interesting that when um, Ironwood was talking with Torchwick at the end, he was like, "Who's in charge of all this?" And he said, "Like, isn't it obvious? You know, you're serious." And it was like, "It's me." You know, blah blah blah. Being what silly. if it isn't though? No one believes him. But I do wonder with the like, isn't it obvious thing and the fact that like o Ozpin and Ironwood and Goodwitch know that like there's something brewing beyond what we the audience seems to know. So I wonder if there's like somebody like an important figure from the Great War or somebody maybe behind Cinder who's like the real person in charge of all of this. Bismarck. <laughs> it says <No>. Bismarck. <laughs> we don't know. And then Yang's mom. And then Yang's mom, yes. Void we, we, maybe. we didn't even talk about that. She portal lady came and saved Yang from uh I now think it's she's Dragonfaunus. Dragon Faunus? I think she's Dragon Faunus. Well, wh what makes you think she's a faunus? The mask and the fact that Yang implements a fiery type element. Hmm. I just, I read a theory about it and I really want it to be true. Because uh, Osmond mentioned that there was a half faunus and that would make sense about why Yang goes on fire. When did he mention that there were, oh, well, well, that half faunus exists, not that there was one yeah. at the school yeah. necessarily. No, I swear that there was something like that in the Specifically, school. Specifically, you point at Yang, a half faunus. Maybe not her. I don't know, but I just thought I it'd know. be really cool if she's a dragon. It, it's possible, but all the faunus we've seen have had some sort of physical trait to show the I fact that they're... Her hair is glowing, eyes. too. I, I get the eyes thing. Come here, come here. They glow. <laughs> she is a super saiyan. And she is a super red. saiyan. I know. It, and it, the mask was dragon. Also, what they're obviously in some sort of dream realm there. So is that like just a dream, or is it like a spiritual realm that like she like the portal thing she I think went it's into? A dream. Maybe like I mean, when we think of the actual um, like you're talking the after credit scene. Yeah, I think it's a dream. You think she's somehow got in her dreams like mom on dreaming? She's like not now, daughter. Because everything is so just weird and flowy. Well, it's definitely it's not Yang, real life. But and why would Yang even be there else. unless we got a note? And I don't think she would have gotten a note off screen. Yeah, but that's, I just hope it means then that like the mom is like infiltrating her dreams or something. Like it's not just something Yang made up in her head. Like she's actually talking to her mom. She never even saw her. So right. So overall thoughts, I suppose, about Ruby Volume Two. Um, I didn't mention it, but uh. The, um, I really do love the, the second opening. Um, as much as I love the opening for the first show, the second one is really good, and the animation's amazing. Um, so overall, like I said, Volume 2 improved a lot on the animation, improved a lot on the writing, so they did what I wanted. They made it a step up from Season 1. I am... I can see that they're playing the long game with this. Like, they're, they've left a lot of things open, you know, for Seasons oh, yeah. 3 and 4 and Toying all that. It. And it, 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 it's fine. Wait, they confirmed four seasons total? Oh, I, they haven't confirmed four seasons total. We know okay. there's a volume three. Okay. Um, but uh, but it does it does mean now. that the end of this season is a little, like, lackluster, I think. Because, like, in vol after we finished volume one, I was thinking, oh, volume two is going to be all about this tournament arc. Because they mentioned that in the first season. And we're still not at the tournament arc yet. And that sounds really cool because I love the fight scenes in the show. And we're right? not going to get 
Are we gonna get it, dude? Volume three is a good wait to volume four. I really hope that? they get the full DBZ status and have the punch meter thing in the beginning to test people's strength before the tournament. Because <laughs> they're already DBZ enough, I want them to go over the edge and bring in her If they have a Hercule character, I will lose it. it. <laughs> her a Hercule character would be pretty. Funny, I'm sorry, actually. Captain Satan. Is that his name in Japanese? Uh, Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan. That's it. <laughs> that's his name in Japanese. So overall, I, I liked Ruby Volume Two a lot. You know, it still has some. The writing isn't always the best, and still has some animation things here or there. And I do feel like you know there's. It's not as climactic as it could have been. Like in the opening, they show you know the four big villains fighting off against you know the four Ruby characters, and we really only got Torchwick fighting and a little bit of Cinder fighting. You know the other two, Emerald and uh, Mercury, didn't even really do anything this season. So I'm a little disappointed we didn't get like some of that stuff that seemed like we were being promised. You know, but uh, but I it's I feel like it is coming, and they're setting a lot of things up for the third season. So I'm looking forward to that a lot now. I absolutely love the um. The right at the end of the opening, as like all the girls kind of like spin out of each other, doing each of their fighting styles, that is my favorite animation. The thing has like Ruby has ever done. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I also like the, it's kind of got like a three D look, but it's got like a sketchy like yeah. color thing to it. It's and cool. Pira has maple leaves because she's Canadian. <laughs> a. A. I, a. I think it's Canada. <laughs> all right, uh, Dakota, what are your final thoughts? Um, definitely a good season. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, fair enough. Kenny. That's, it's not an anime. It's not an anime. It's true. What else? I like the Corgi. Okay. <laughs> Corgi's evil. Uh, deep insight from Mr. McNulty over here. <laughs> wait. Learn, learn, learn. <laughs> <laughs> no, none of that. No air horde. Clara. I, my shipping heart, my shipping heart shipping got, horn. shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. Is that an organ? Oh, I thought she's, <laughs> never mind. I thought that was horn, but okay. My right. shipping heart is smiling. And I'm really excited to see how the girls are gonna grow, and like I want to see uh, the uh, purse girl do more things. <laughs> you like purse she girl. She is. Oh man. What if she's like the yes, ex girlfriend please. who never returns? The girlfriend who never returns. No, I want to see her do more things. I mean, Rose Tyler. Honestly, we know she, literally nothing she, about Bunny Girl's team right like now. Like she so. beats so many things with her purse, and I'm like, yes. Well, and then pulls yeah, out a, a gun. Them. And then she's just carrying it around like it's this little dainty thing, and then she just smacks things with it. I'm like, yes. I don't know. Her keep whole doing like doing it, being like, oh, you you took down like my favorite clothing store. I don't know. She seems like the sort of badass like I, love I don't like her. that kind of stuff. Popular, pretty cheerleader girl. I don't know. Oh, I love she's her. popular. Aaron, what are your final thoughts? Uh, could use some work, but overall, pretty good. If they made the machine, the rise of the machine thing any more obvious, it would be painful. But uh, <laughs> other than that, the Terminators. It probably will be painful next season for the main characters. And uh, Pira for Captain America. <laughs> hey, <laughs> with Wait, that. Who's her Bucky then? Oh, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means John's no, gonna lose an arm. That means John's gonna be. Oh, he's gonna get brainwashed and assassinate people over and the kill Cold her. War. Oh, what if he like misguided who she was because somebody put illusion magic and stabbed Peter? And then like, John right in the gains metal or <laughs> magnetism as his Wait. semblance oh. and gets golden armor and feels terrible for oh, the rest of his life. But he'd be so cool. What, his ability is to absorb others' abilities. <laughs> so he's, he's oh. so he's no, Peter no, from Heroes. But yes. Only if they die. <laughs> Kill There's a point only where if it. he kills them. <laughs> what if somebody breaks, man? <laughs> what if somebody <laughs> stabs through John and then it kills Pir Pirla? Like he's trying to save her and it just ends up killing both of them, oh, God, but he comes laugh. back because his semblance, his semblance is, is because his semblance is just for immortality. One to live, he can't, one the other must, must die. die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like this evil. And it's worth noting that you know Joan of Arc in history kind of got burned at the stake, so uh, it's not a happy end. What is that is, what Here is Captain America. <laughs> John gets burned at a stake. What if John's having a steak dinner and just gets burned alive? Whoa. No, not burned my steak. steak. <laughs> no, <laughs> my he steak burnt, is he burns burning. a steak. I'm glad we're the worst people. It could be time. like, oh, what was that? That's it was bedtime stories out. with Adam Sandler, where he thought he was going to catch on fire. Turns out he was just fired from his job. Oh yeah, ah, <laughs> maybe something right. like that. I do remember that actually. All right, like so. That, Thank you guys for being here today. Talk about what we're going to do for next time. I think next week we'll do maybe a well, – I want to do a podcast on um, the new episodes of Core that have come out hey. and uh, new episodes of Psychopath Season 2 because those are both going on and we want to simulcast I those. I need to see Psychopath. You do. Uh, Hi. It's been pretty good. Uh, and then in two weeks I'm hoping to do um, a big show that we've talked about before. I've never gotten actually around to doing Neon Genesis Evangelion. Because uh, I, I, wa I talked about watching it over the summer and I never got around to it. So I feel like it's, it's time. The only thing you need to know is watermelons. Watermelons. <laughs> it's important actually. 
I'm not making that up. It actually is. Okay, I don't. I Trust haven't heard me. about that. My favorite I read character was watermelon. Up until volume nine, and then volume ten, I think was discontinued for some reason, and I never read it. And then I stopped. It's it's online. I've actually read all of the Ava manga. Yeah, but Ooh, like they discontinued the um the actual physical copies for hmm. reasons I don't exactly know. Weird. But yeah, so that's that. So. uh... Thank you all the, out there for listening to this. If you want to email us, you can email us at techheads at avwproductions.com. You can follow us on Twitter at techheadsou. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Give us good ratings and reviews on iTunes. All that good stuff. AVW Meet. No, we're techheads on YouTube. Uh, not AVW Media. We changed that. So, uh, thank you guys for being on the podcast. Aaron and Dakota, I know you aren't on very many of these, but I'm glad that you're here to talk about Ruby. Woo! And uh, until next time, we will see you guys later. <laughs> Saw that coming, Kenny. <laughs> that wasn't the other one. <laughs> this product is copyright AVW Productions.